Hey guys, welcome to this tutorial, my name is Attempster. Today I wanted to go over a really quick tutorial, basically just showing you how to use one of the sensors that isn't talked about or used very much. So this sensor here is the first one, which you might have uh, skipped across quite a bit, and that is the actuator sensor. So basically what this does is it will detect whether an actuator is being activated or deactivated and then it will send out a pulse to do something else uh, whenever that happens. So right here what I have is a property called go and basically what I've done is always play an animation here and then after I've turned on the animation I've also set go to true and then once the animation finishes because it's inverted uh, and then go is still equal to true then I'll spawn in an object. So if I press P here, the animation will play and then an object will spawn. So this is really handy if you don't want to be having timer properties going the entire time. So uh, previously you probably need some sort of timer property that would be constantly going in the background until it reaches a certain value and then you'd be able to spawn in the object. So yeah, fairly straightforward. I'm going to quickly go over setting it up. So again, let's add a new sort of scene, game. GeoSL animation frame rate to 60. Uh, let's go ahead and add game logic and then scroll down. That should all be fine. Uh, our cube here, I'm going to add a timeline and I'll quickly animate it. So on frame 0, I insert location. Again, this can be for any sort of animation. It might be for a rig or it might be, yeah, for anything. It doesn't even have to be an animation, it could be you spawning in an object and you want something else to happen afterwards. So again, all of that set up, so we have our animation here. So I'm going to set it to always play the action, or the animation, uh, in here, and at frame 50. And so now, uh, what this is going to do is, over here, I'm going to basically go ahead and add myself an actuator sensor. And if we set this just like this uh, now, what will happen is, actually, let's just try that out. So add a motion, and this is going to make uh, the cube spin. So there we go. So once this is activated, then the cube will spin. So if we press P, you'll notice it's spinning the entire time. So what's basically happening is when this is activated, so when this activates, then this activates as well. Now what you probably want to do is only have this activate when this is finished. So to do that, you can just choose inverted. Now the problem with inverted uh, means that it will start before this has even been triggered. So this will start almost instantly and then it will trigger again once this is turned off. So it's almost triggered twice. So uh, to stop that from happening, at least the first one, what we're going to do is add in a property called go. It's going to be a boolean and then over here we're going to add ourselves a property it will assign go to true. So what we're doing here is basically we are uh, always playing the action so activating this and then also changing go to true. What this means is that now that go is true if we add a property here making sure that go is true and we join that in with the and this means that once this here has finished, so it's turned off, and also go is equal to true, then whatever's next will activate. So for example here, let's add in an object. So if we go over here, add ourselves in, I don't know, monkey, and let's always have it moving upwards. So something like that. Oh, can also have it rotating. All right, and then over here. So now if we press P, the animation will play and then we need to add it in. Oh, add in that. And you can minimize both of those. And so now animation will play and then a monkey will spawn. So yeah, that is about it. Just wanted to show you guys uh, sort of how that worked. I found it quite helpful once I got the hang of using it. Um, yeah, again, it's quite useful if you don't want to have hundreds of timers going all over the place and do you think just one normal property should be fine? Uh, if you wanted to, I guess you could also use an integer so you can have multiple types. So if, say, property is equal to 2, then something else happens when the action finishes. 
Um, but again, up to you. So anyway, just wanted to make this tutorial showing you guys uh, how that can be used. Hopefully you found it useful. If you did, let me know with a like, comment, or share down below. All of this stuff is greatly appreciated. But either way, hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Have an awesome week, and I'll see you guys in the next video.